Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Um, been a little bit since my last upload, but we're just getting ready to get started back here again on uh, 1956 Little Gem. Got it shoehorned into my garage. It was tight. Um, we're gonna start on the outside. I'm gonna do this restoration probably a little different than I've done some of my others. Um, we're actually going to restore pieces and parts as we take them off. This should expedite the reassembly process. And the goal is uh, hopefully to have this done by next spring. We're gonna start out with the windows. Um, restoring vintage camper windows is a lot more time consuming than you would think it would be. Um, so we're going to start and I'm gonna show you how to disassemble this window. I believe this may be a her type window. Um, it's a little ambiguous. The construction is a little different than even I've seen. Um, so we're gonna show you how to take this apart without hopefully uh, not destroying it in the process, which believe it or not is very easy to do. You can't buy these windows anymore. Parts for them are hit or miss. Um, so it's really important that you take them apart correctly so that you don't damage them and that you can overcome any obstacles that age might throw your way. With that, let's get started. We're going to start by taking off the top drip rail so that we can actually get to the window. These old number eight screws are pretty hit, so we're gonna throw those in the scrap pile, see what we get when we come out. Uh, every little bit helps. Uh, if you have stuff that you can scrap, definitely save it. It will help with the cost of your restoration. Nuts, bolts, uh, old copper and brass fittings add up. Surprisingly, these screws are actually coming out pretty well so far. A lot of times with old wood campers, the screw will be completely deteriorated except for a little bit. Uh, what you can actually do to help remove these, sometimes as the threads are gone, you can use a pair of angle needle nose pliers and actually get behind it and very gingerly help that screw out. You wanna be careful prying against the skin of your trailer. It's aluminum, it will dent easily and scratches do not polish out. So if you damage it, it's there to stay. Let's get this off and we'll go to the next step. I'm gonna remove this. One thing that I highly advise that you do <clears throat> go out get yourself a sharpie when you take apart a project of this size take lots of pictures and label parts where they come off from in an area where they won't show um, you can remove sharpie with a little bit of uh, bright clean off from aluminum but that being said don't make any more work for yourself than necessary and label this That way when you have a pile of parts, you know where everything came from. And that will help you uh, during the reassembly, making sure that everything gets back where it's supposed to go. See if that helped. Not enough to say so. So, pair of ice grips, 
don't get too crazy with it, just enough to hold the screw, turn it out. Now we can actually remove the window, lift it up, and slide it out. Okay, so looking at the inside of the window here, you can see that the way that this frame is attached uses these Phillips head screws along the frame and actually sandwiches it between the walls. Um, <clears throat> I've tried to remove these screws. They are pretty rusted in place. There's really not a good way to get to them uh, to try to apply heat or lubricant to try to get these out. Um, so I'm going to show you another method to get these out, explain a couple of methods. So here along the window you can actually see these rivets on the outside of the frame. What those hold on is this little flat nut. I removed this earlier from another window. Um, you can still buy these. They're not identical. You can find them through places like McMaster Car, but they are not cheap. I mean, this little nut will cost you a couple bucks a piece. Um, most of these windows have, oh, one, two, three, four, about eight of them per window. So uh, in an entire project, that can add up very quickly. Um, so salvaging that hardware is important. Here on this window, you can see there's a lot of corrosion along this frame. Um, I'll show you one method to remove these rivets. This is called a pinch rivet. Um, we can grind them, drill them. Um, if you're not comfortable with a tool like this, you can use a Dremel. Uh, it's just time consuming. I'm fairly confident with this. so. Uh, I'm going to grind these out to loosen this fitting so we can remove the frame. The next method of removal is to actually take an automatic centering punch, get pretty close to center on the rivets. Punch it a couple of times. The goal is to create a nice center starting divot. For our drill bit to start into. I'm using an eighth inch drill bit because that is the size that I am replacing these with. It is important to use the correct size drill bit. Okay. So we've drilled all of the rivets that pinch the window in. Very gingerly work the window off from the trailer. There's probably still some sealant around the edges. Get it popped loose. Now you've got the outer screen frame. As you can see on the back side, that has the channel that actually holds the rubber that holds your screen in. Um, we're not gonna do the screens in this video. Uh, probably do those another time. Um, but right now we're gonna focus on just the restoration of the window and the resealing of the window. Now that we've got that out, we can take our original frame out. As said before, now it has these nuts. Now that we can actually get to the back of them, we can probably remove them. Starting up here in the corner, this style window has what's commonly referred to as uh, a Chicago bowl sometimes called a sex bolt. If I have to explain that to you, um, 
probably going to want to go back to uh, reproductive education. Okay, so our frame is all prepped, got a nice shine to it, got our glass prepped, got our new rubber glazing, take off a bit, start at about the top middle of our glass. Just going to work our way around. Okay. We've made it all the way around. We've got these nasty puckers here in the corner. Show you how to take those out. First things first, fairly sharp, new blade. Take and cut our glazing. Make a nice square edge. Okay. Fix this corner and hold this nice and tight. Take our razor blade and put a 45 degree slice in the glazing. Now that we've done that on both sides, and take our knife, we've overlapped the seal over top of it. Take our knife, 45 degree angle. Now we have a nice glazing that lays together in a 45 degree angle. Um, I suppose if you wanted to take and put a little sealant in this corner to seal it, it would probably be okay. Um, but this is probably pretty close to the way that this was done originally. All right, now you can see Got our corners notched in. Everything's nice and tight. Last thing you do is take and nip that so that you know that you have enough to make it all the way around. You do not want a gap at the top of that window pane.
match it up. Slice it off. Good to go. Let's get it in the frame. See so if we can get us in here. Now we got this up. I'm going to Okay, so we got our gasket pulled in. Use our knife again, use the line in the window, match it up real nice, and cut a nice 45 degree angle. And just like that, we've got one window completely reglazed, polished, put back together. I'm not super happy with those 45s. I'll probably end up redoing them. But overall, it's a very nice restoration on this window. As always, thanks for watching. Um, next time, we're going to show you how to do the window screens and restore the other half of these. And uh, it's about supper time here in Michigan. It's pretty warm. It's time to go in and call it a night. Thanks again for watching. See you next time.